When driving in the rain, there really is nothing to be afraid of. If you like your cars and your performance driving, then you may even look forward to driving in the rain, whether it's a light downpour or a heavy thunderstorm. Unless you simply cannot see or the water is beginning to settle too heavily on the road, there's no reason why you can't drive in the rain and hopefully with a few tips, I'll be able to help you stress less about driving in the wet and even potentially enjoy it. Before driving in the rain, or in general for that matter, it's wise to check the condition of your car's tyres. The minimum amount of car tread you are allowed in the UK is 1.6mm, but you want to stay away from tread this low if you're driving in heavy rain. If your tyres look at all bald in any way or unevenly worn, this is going to be dangerous to drive on. You need new tyres. The tread is the only thing keeping you from aquaplaning and potentially losing control of your car. Make sure your tyre pressures are at recommended levels too. Low pressures can be dangerous in the wet too as you won't have as much force down on the road to push through the water. Pressures of your car will normally be in the handbook, on the door sills or petrol cap door. You should be able to look them up online too. As well as all that, make sure your lights are working, wipers are in good nick and functional too. Make sure to turn on your headlights if it's heavier rain just to increase visibility. But unless it's foggy or unnaturally heavy rain, please don't use your fog lights. It's just going to annoy other road users. A good habit to get into when driving on the wet on public roads is increasing your following distance from normal. Normally you might keep two or more car lengths away from those in front of you at speed, but now you're going to want to double that number at least. Remember that your stopping distance roughly doubles and you have less visibility at the same time. More distance, less speed and more awareness is needed in the wet on the roads. A good tip as well is if you're on the motorway traveling at higher speeds, Try and avoid getting boxed in so that you have nowhere to go if you aquaplane. Big aquaplaning over big puddles could send you over quite a bit of road, so you don't want to be ending up in people's doors or the side walls and the dividers. Apparently, cruise control, adaptive or normal, isn't recommended in the wet too. Sensors will be less effective in the rain anyway, and cruise control will upset the balance and reaction times of your car before puddles and situations. You'll need to be more alert during the rain anyway, so it's probably good practice to leave it off. Traction control and cruise control speed adjustment gets upset in big puddles and aquaplaning too, so it can make things a little bit more dangerous. When driving in the wet, your grip on the road is going to be cut by around a third according to statistics, even more so if the surface is muddy, oily and greasy on top of that. Bring your speed down before the corners and along any roads with standing water and be prepared for any aquaplaning or oversteering and understeering. I'll do a quick explanation of how to catch slides at the end of the video and I'll also do a few videos on this more in depth for different cars in the future too. Now you may have heard of aquaplaning in the wet and it is when your car's tyres skim over the top of puddles and you lose contact with the road surface. This can feel a little violent in the car and the steering will either go very light or be dragged over to one side. If this happens, don't panic and don't do anything drastic with the controls of the car. Keep the car steady and straight with very light braking if you need to. You have to wait for the water to clear as aquaplaning is caused by two things, speed and the water itself. If you see a big puddle coming up in the distance and can't avoid it, try and scrub off as much speed you can before the puddle as you won't be able to do anything whilst you're aquaplaning. Be very delicate with the controls and avoid violent steering corrections or harsh braking. The only thing you can do is wait for puddles to clear if you are aquaplaning over them and hold out till your car grips up again. Again, you need to avoid these situations in the first place rather than end up in them if you can. Driving in the rain is all about being pre-prepared and aware at all times. Knowing that the car will move around underneath you a lot more in these conditions and that other people tend to act a bit differently too. They may break for no apparent reason and act oddly so be extra alert. In wet conditions your car has a higher chance of sliding. The rain is a lubricant alongside mud, oil and grease between your tyres and the road surface. Slides come in two main forms, understeer and oversteer. In this video, I'm just going to give you a very basic explanation of how to correct slides as correction does differ per car. I'll be doing another video in the future to go over more of the specifics of catching slides in different cars, so don't worry about that. For now, I'm just going to give you the basics of how to correct a slide in its two different forms. Understeer is generally the most common type of slide you'll experience on the road, and it's when the front tyres lose grip before the rears. This will feel like you are turning and the car will want to carry on straight forwards. It can be a little disconcerting. The solution is this. 
You're going to have to come off the throttle gently and don't apply more steering if you've lost grip at the front as it's going to make the problem worse. Wait for the car to grip up again and then carry on steering more if you need to. More power and steering will make everything worse as the front tires are being overwhelmed. Apply very light braking if you need to. Again, this is one of those situations where violent corrections aren't going to do you any good. Wait for the car to grip up and then carry on. Oversteer tends to be a little less common on the road and is when the rear of the car loses grip before the front, normally mid-turn or under heavy braking. The way to counter this in any car is to counter steer, which is to steer into the slide and the direction you want to be facing. This can take some getting used to and if you can get yourself on a skid pan course to try this out first hand then please do. With front wheel drive cars you can add a little power too to straighten the car out, whilst rear wheel drive cars need you to come off the power. This is where I mentioned it gets complicated, so I will be doing a whole nother video on the details of this. Just remember, when it comes to slides in any car, you have to be quick to react, but not to violent. You need to sort the problem out without causing a bigger one. The clips I just used were from Rob Cox, a good friend of mine who's a talented lad behind the wheel and has videos that are worth checking out if you're into cars and motorsport in general too. The best idea is to avoid these situations in normal driving in the first place. Get your speed down and look as far ahead as you can to avoid standing water, big puddles and mud on the road. Though there will be times where you will have to correct situations, so learning how to do it is important. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to use your own judgement on the road before driving too and that you should consult your local instructors and professionals first. Remember to like, comment and sub, all that beautiful stuff and let me know in the comments what you would like to see covered in future videos. Drive safe and I'll see you in the next one.